before earlier troubles that led to partition. <laughs> Dublin at the turn of the century. Ireland was part of the United Kingdom, but three quarters of Irishmen were Catholic and resented being part of Protestant Britain. But for the Protestant minority, the British connection gave them a privileged position in Irish society. So when Edward VII visited Dublin in 1903, Protestants would have welcomed him as the symbol of the union from which they benefited. But to Catholics, he would have been the personification of a union that oppressed them. The Catholic Irish, for nearly a century, had been restive under British rule. They sought to be a separate nation. We believed we were, had a different culture and we had a different, um, different in many ways from the British people. We didn't want to be governed from Whitehall simply because Whitehall didn't know how to govern us and we knew how to govern ourselves. Nationality is a, is a beautiful thing. And we were nationally minded and we wanted our country for ourselves. Ireland was quite unlike Britain. It was poor, rural, Catholic and Gaelic. Britain was rich, industrial, Protestant and powerful. These people were represented at Westminster and their MPs had to plead the Irish case in a parliament governing an industrial society and a large empire. There was little time for Irish aspirations. However, Gladstone, the liberal leader, had shown concern for Ireland. In 1886, to form a Liberal government, he needed the support of the 86 Irish Nationalist MPs led by Charles Parnell. Parnell's price was some measure of limited independence for Ireland. So Gladstone took office and introduced a Home Rule Bill. It was defeated. But the question of Irish independence was now a live issue in British politics. It was quite an historic break because it was the first rupture in what had been since the Act of Union, the total consensus in British domestic politics against tampering with the constitutional provisions of the Union. The Gladstonian conversion to Home Rule in 1886 <coughs> effectively ruptured what had been the British consensus on non-tampering with the constitutional position of Ireland within the Union. It was a major achievement. But Home Rule was not welcomed everywhere in Ireland. The Protestant minority concentrated in the northeast around Belfast, a very British looking industrial city, was extremely apprehensive. No one really thought that Gladstone would do it, but when he when it was announced that he had become converted to Home Rule for Ireland, of course the position of the Irish Protestants was again embattled and, and precarious. They felt that uh, independence was at last a practical possibility and that this would mean that they would become a minority in a Catholic dominated Ireland. Onto the streets they came to demonstrate against home rule. The Orange Order, an exclusively Protestant organization dedicated to the maintenance of the British connection and Protestant Protestant values, led and organized the protest. The people were determined that if necessary, they would fight, fight and fight readily to hold our place here in the United Kingdom as we had been uh, uh, trying to do in the past. We didn't want to be governed by cardinals, popes or anybody else. We wanted to be on the British government. We felt that we would uh, have the power, would influence the government uh, against bringing in home rule. We in the North did not want it. We Protestants wanted to stay with Britain and still do. In working class Belfast, 
Protestants were concerned for their way of life in a united Ireland dominated by the Roman Catholic Church. Belfast, in any case, had far more in common with Liverpool than Galway. Both were the product of Britain's Industrial Revolution. Belfast was an industrial city. The city of linen mills. shipyards. From the yards of Harland and Wolfe came the ships that plied trade in the British Empire. The northeast of Ireland was part of the British economy in a sense that the rest of Ireland wasn't. Not only Protestants had come from the countryside to man the new industries, so had Catholics but they never mixed. As Belfast grew from a small market town to an industrial city of over 300,000 people, Protestants gravitated to East Belfast, Sandy Row, the Shankill, and New Lodge. The Catholics to the Short Strand, the markets, and the area around the Falls Road, setting the patterns that largely remain to this day. And the antagonism was there too. In nearly every decade of the 19th century, there were sectarian riots in Belfast, the worst in 1886 at the time of the Home Rule Bill. Troops had to be called in to part Catholic from Protestant. It was the shape of things to come. Westminster, London. The 6th of February, 1911. King George V opens the British Parliament. Asquith, Prime Minister and leader of the Liberal Party, needed the support of Irish Nationalist MPs to stay in office. John Redmond, leader of the Irish Nationalists, extracted his price for the support of the Irish vote in the House of Commons, a new Home Rule proposal. The measure that was to be put before Parliament was, from the nationalist point of view, modest enough. Ireland would have some control over her own internal affairs. But in Ulster, the reaction was uncompromising. It would not be brooked. 